Hello students, welcome to another lesson. I'm teacher Alice and we are looking at form 3 chemistry topic 2 and the chapter is known as the mole. Uh, we are still looking at titration. We have previously looked at direct titration and we have looked at examples on redox titration and how to answer or how to work out questions on redox titration, sorry, on direct titration. So today we are going to start looking at redox titration. So what is a redox titration and examples of a redox titration. Now, this is part 12 uh, of that topic and we are looking at the definition of a redox titration and we say a redox titration is a type of titration based on a redox that is reduction and oxidation so red meaning reduction and ox stands for oxidation so a redox titration is a titration that is based on reduction and oxidation reaction between an analyte and a titrant so remember we said an analyte is the solution that we have not been provided with the concentration but we have its volume but for a titrant this is the standard solution that we put in the burette uh, we have its its concentration and also its volume so in a redox titration we use the electrons we deal with electrons so we have to write them uh, the ionic equations. Then the core of redox titration is a chemical reaction where a substance loses electrons and another uh, you, uh, another substance gains electrons. We say the process of losing electrons is known as oxidation, while the process of gaining electrons is known as reduction. So uh, in a redox titration, we have the substance that is losing and the other one that is gaining. So it loses and the other one gains to form new products. Okay, now here we have a term that we are going to define. We, we call it the equivalence point. And this is the point in the titration at which the amount of titrant is added stoichiometrically stoichiometrically equivalent to the amount of analyte present in the sample okay so just as in direct titration an indicator is used they are to, to determine the end point we said the end point is when the reaction the change in color of the indicator will show that the reaction has already taken place so that is the end point and we say that the end point should be very close uh, to what we are referring to as the equivalence point all right then we have these common titrants that are used in a redox titration so the first one is potassium permanganate uh, students mostly refer refers it to to as chimnophore, so that is potassium permanganate. Then we have potassium dichromate, that is its formula, potassium dichromate, and then we have iodine. All right, those are the most common titrants used, although there are others that are also used. Then in a redox titration the number of moles of the electrons uh, transferred in the reaction is calculated to determine the concentration of the analyte this is very similar to a direct titration so we use uh, we use the, the 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 data or the concentration of the the titrant to get the concentration of the what of the analyte so for the redox titration the number of moles of the electrons so here we are dealing with the electrons that are maybe transferred from one substance to the other to this will help us determine the concentration of the analyte 
So just we have steps uh, just in general uh, of how we determine concentration of the analyte. So the first step is to write a balanced half reactions for the oxidation and reduction. So we have to write the two we have to write the two half reactions, one for oxidation and the other one for reduction. Then step number two is to combine these half reactions to give an overall uh, redox reaction. And it should be balanced, well balanced. Then step number three is to use this documentary to relate the moles of the titrant to moles of the analyte. So we are using the mole ratio of this uh, balanced redox equation. So according to this equation, we are going to get the number of moles of the electrons so that we can get the what? The number of moles of the analyte. All right, then step number four, after we have uh, the, the number of moles of the analyte, we can find its concentration now using the volume and the volume should be in liters. So with number of moles, we use the relationship between moles and concentration and volume to get the concentration of the analyte. All right. So we can look at example one. We have to determine the concentration of iron ions uh, that is in a solution. So we have 25 ml of iron ion solution being titrated with 0 0.0200 molar potassium permanganate and it requires 30 milliliters of potassium permanganate to reach the end point. So we said the first step is to write uh, a balanced redox re reaction. This is where we have to write the two half reactions, then that is for oxidation and reduction, then combine them to give us a, a, an overall balanced redox reaction. So here I have the overall balanced redox reaction between potassium permanganate and iron ions. So the first step is to calculate the number of moles of potassium permanganate. So we have the molarity and also we have the volume in milliliters. So now to get the, the number of moles, we have to take molarity times the volume in liters. So it, we have 90 milliliters converted to liters, that would be 0 0.03 liters. So to get the number of moles of potassium permanganate, we multiply the concentration that is 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.03, the volume to give us 6 times 10 is per negative 4 moles. So these are the number of moles of potassium permanganate. Then we don't need the, mole, the number of moles of potassium permanganate, but we need the number of moles of iron ions. So we have step number two. From the balanced equation, we have one mole of potassium permanganate reacts with five moles of what? Five moles of iron ions. So what we need to do is to multiply the number of moles of potassium permanganate times five so that we get the number of moles of iron ions. So that's where we are multiplying five times 6.0 times seven is to a negative four which is giving us 3.0 times 10 is per negative three moles. So those are the number of moles of what? Of ion ions. Then we need the concentration now. So to get the concentration of ion ions, we have to take the number of moles divided by the volume, but now the volume in liters. So we have Number of moles of iron ions is 3.00 multiplied by 10 is per negative 3 moles. Then the volume of, of the iron ion solution used is 25 milliliters converted to liters divided by a thousand. 
then after we divide here we get 0 .0, 0 0.120 molar and that is how we find the concentration of the analyte in a redox titration we have seen it is using the what it is using the number then electrons okay we do we look at example two so find the concentration of hydrogen peroxide in a solution so the question is question is we have 50 ml of hydrogen peroxide solution uh, it is being titrated with 0 0.0250 molar potassium permanganate and we are told that it requires 20 ml of potassium permanganate to reach the end point so remember if we are not given the volume uh, of the titrant this means we have the procedure where uh, we, we have to perform this experiment in the lab so i am giving the volume because we are not doing the experiment but if it is for the experiment from the titration tables you get this number or this volume from the average volume in the titration table so this is if maybe i did my experiment this was my volume the average volume so it is not necessarily the question that it will be the same uh, or it will be similar to this one but now you can find the number of the volume uh, considering that you know the the tight rand okay so the most important thing is that you have to write this balanced redox equation okay so that you have you can know the exact number of moles that you are dealing with so step number one is to find the number of moles of the tight rand given that we know the concentration and now we know the volume so number of moles we multiply concentration times the volume in liters volume is 20 divided by a thousand so multiply by 0 0.250 will give us 5.0 times 3 is one negative 4 moles from this equation we have seen that two moles of potassium permanganate is reacting with five moles of uh, hydrogen peroxide so to get the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide we have to multiply uh, the moles of potassium permanganate times two so moles of hydrogen peroxide will be two times the moles of uh, potassium permanganate which will give us 1.25 times 10 to the power negative three moles now with that one we can calculate the concentration and we said that concentration is equals to the number of moles divided by the volume in what in liters so the number of moles is 1.25 times that is to negative 3 divided by the volume which is 50 ml converted to liters divided by a thousand so the concentration will be 0 0.0250 molar or the same as 0 0.025 moles per liter which is the same as uh, molarity we look at example number example three we are determining the amount of copper ions in a solution and we have 25 milliliters of copper ions solution is titrated with 0 0.10 molar of sodium sulfite that is its formula and it requires 35 ml of sodium sulfite to reach the end point okay so we have the two balanced redox equation uh, between copper and iodine and iodine and the sulfide ion the sulfide ions so we are going now to get to look at the solution of how we we find the concentration of copper ions that is present in this solution so step number one is to find the moles of the sulfide sodium the sulfide so we have moles to be given by concentration multiplied by volume in liters that will give us 
3.50 times 10 is power negative 3 moles. Okay, then we look at the balanced equation. Uh, we can see that one mole of iodine reacts with two moles of sodium thiosulfide. And also, one mole of copper uh, produces 0 0.5 moles of iodine. So this information will show shows that shows us that uh, one mole, uh, the number of moles to get the number of moles of iodine, we can get the number of moles of sodium thiosulfide, then divide it by two, so that we get the number of moles of what of iodine. That is why we have taken 3.50 times 10 is for negative three moles divided by two to get 1.75 times 10 is power negative 3 moles. Likewise, the number of copper ions will be the same 1.75 times 10 is power negative 3 moles. So we have now the moles of copper ions. To calculate the concentration of copper ions, uh, we have to take the number of moles divided by what? The volume, and the volume should be in liters. So we have to divide 1.75 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles divided by a volume which is 25 ml of 1000 will give us 0 0.07 molar or the same as moles per liter. So that was uh, how we calculate the concentration of the analyte in a redox reaction that marks the end of part 12 okay let's meet in the next part or uh, in the next lesson it will be part 13 see you again